What's going on you guys? Welcome to the video. My name is Armon. If you're new to the channel, I'm a Toronto-based deep house and progressive house DJ, a lawyer by day, DJ by night, and car lover. Um, so this video has been a long time coming because I've gotten quite a lot of requests from, from people on this topic. So uh, here it is. It is a video on how to mix in key when you're DJing. So we're going to have to go through a, a little bit of the basics of music theory to understand some of the very high level basics about keys and key shifting and what is a major key versus a minor key. But don't worry, I'm assuming because uh, you're watching this video that you don't have any advanced musical training or music theory, which is why you're watching this. Because if you, if you did, you would already know what it means to mix in key or how to uh, shift between the different keys and uh, do that without the sounds clashing. So what you might have noticed before, if you're in a nightclub and the DJ does a bad mix, is you may sound like the, the two songs as they're blending just don't quite fit with one another. And usually that's because there's some kind of harmonic uh, melodic problem. That is one song is in another key that is just not compatible. And the DJ has uh, made the error by selecting a song to play uh, and you know, the one way to do that, if you're going to just absolutely have to play that song, is wait until the melodies have fallen away from the first song, right? So the beats just, it kind of just reduces down to the bass line and the beats, and then you might be able to mix in the new song, notwithstanding that it's in a clashing key. But what we're trying to talk about today, and what, what the goal is for taking your DJ skills and your mixing from a beginner level up to an intermediate or more of advanced level, would be to... Uh, be able to uh, not drop the energy level and just reduce things down to the beat only during your set because believe me, that's, that's noticeable. We're talking about being able to layer harmonies over one another, be a bit more bold with our mixing, you know, start mixing in the next song when the other song still has like two and a half minutes left to, uh, to play. And you're going to have melodies layered over one another. So before it sounds like the first song is about to stop or that's coming to its end, you're already well on your way with the next song. So the energy level maintains and it becomes a lot more difficult for the people on the dance floor to understand that the song has even uh, begun changing. And that's what you want, right? Is you want seamless, uh, sneaky mixing that the listener doesn't even know. Next thing they know, it's like, oh, the new song is already, it's on, it's arrived. I like this song, but when did it, when did it change, right? That's what we want to do. So to help explain, uh, today and so that that you can actually hear it. We're going to use three different aids today to guide us uh, through this tutorial We're going to use uh, guitar uh, My turntables and the famous Camelot wheel. Okay, so, so to start with let us have a look at what the Camelot wheel is Because that may be a term or a name that you've never heard before the Camelot wheel is a fairly ingenious uh, graphic representation of major of all the keys major keys and minor keys and they're arranged in such a fashion that it allows you to, to visualize uh, what key would mix well with another key. So the way this is arranged is that you'll see all the major keys are on the outside of the wheel and that there's uh, 12 of them. And then on the inside of the wheel, you have the 12 minor keys. The way this is intended to be used is that if you're in say B major, which is cell number uh, one B, you're able to move so say the song you're playing is B major, and then you have to choose the next song. The next song then allows you to go next door to E major, or down to F sharp major, or immediately down into the inner wheel for the minor keys to A flat minor. Those are the permitted uh, moves that you can get away with and not have a harmonic out of key clash that will sound bad. So if you're playing in B major, then this here is your permitted zone, everything that's outlined in red, of where you're entitled to go. Now, before we go a step further with the Camelot wheel, let's talk about what the differences are between major keys and minor keys. Let me get the guitar to demonstrate. <clears throat> if you've been following my channel, you may have heard me mention this in previous tutorials, that major keys tend to sound more full, uh, more rich, and more pleasing to our ears. So for example, here is the chord of D major. Okay? And then if I change it to D minor, which is only a half step of difference on my e high E string of my guitar. Now I think everyone can agree that sounds a little bit darker, 
a little bit unsettling, like maybe one note is out of, uh, in the wrong place or something is missing from the chord. So again, if I play them back to back uh, more quickly. Oops, sorry. Kind of sounds like it leaves you hanging, right? And what I've noticed with deep house music, because a lot of it is arranged in such a way as to kind of sound dark and brooding and, and a bit uh, mysterious, I've noticed a lot, a lot of deep house music is in the key of A minor, okay? So, um, now what does it mean for a song to be in a certain key? Well, it typically, it, it, what that means is that the, the notes in the song uh, fall into the notes that you can play in a certain scale. So it's a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but for example, if you wanna look up an A minor scale, you can see what the notes are in there. And then um, it kind of has to do with where the notes resolve to in the song, what are the leading chords of the song. And uh, again, I'll, I'll leave that further. You can obviously read up on the internet, lots of resources out there. But uh, for now, it goes a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so now with that basic understanding, let's use the guitar to give a few examples of permissible moves around the Camelot wheel, okay? So I'm allowed to go from cell 9B over on the left side of the wheel, G major, I can go up to D major, or I can go down to C major, or I can even go in to E minor to do a major to minor key shift. So let's start out with the major keys. I'll go from G major to D major, back to G major again, and then down to C major. That would sound like this. Okay, and you can hear that those all complement each other well. It doesn't sound like anything's out of place or anything's going wrong. And it's no surprise because actually those three chords are three out of like six chords that Oh, almost all Oasis songs are written with. And in fact, Oasis would come under criticism from a lot of guitar players that, oh, it's uh, unimaginative guitar writing. So they use like the same six or seven chords in all their songs. But guess what? They write hits and it's hard to argue with that. If it's simple, it's, it may be catchy. And just because it's simple doesn't mean it's not good. So let's try now going from the key shift of G major into E major. So again, G is here, G major and E minor would be like this. Okay, that sounds fine as well. But suppose I was to go from G major to E major instead of E minor, as I'm permitted to do on the Camelot wheel. If I go from G major to E major, That sounds like a little bit more of something's happening. The song is changing up the momentum and the mood. Now it's not to say that you could never link those two chords together in a song. You could, but remember what we're talking about here is DJ mixing, which means that these chords or notes that belong to the family of scales that's in that key the song is written in will be playing over one another at the same time as you mix the songs. And that's where the trouble could, could arise, right? <clears throat> so, if I were to play a G major chord and layer it over a, say, uh, D minor chord at the same time, and I'll do that and I'll play them together through my software, I'll, I'll record both and I'll play them back for you right now. You can hear that those two chords are fighting with one another. It does not sound good. Whereas if I play a G major chord and a C major chord at the same time as one another, sounds a lot better, doesn't it? Okay, so with that understanding in place now, I think we've exhausted the guitar. Let us go to the turntables and I will do a couple of mixes of permissible moves within the Camelot wheel, but then I will also do some that violate the rules, and you can decide for yourselves which DJ mixes sound better as I change the song over to the new song. All right, so before we go to the uh, uh, turntables then, as a final note, uh, let's just talk about where this takes you in your 
uh, DJ practicing. Uh, what I would recommend doing is printing off in color a Camelot wheel for yourself as a reference guide or have it up on your laptop or your iPad or whatever and refer to it for a while and follow the rules and see what happens to your sets. Record your sets, practice mixing in key or with the permissible key shifting of the wheel and see how things improve for you. After that, you know, practice like that for a few weeks or a month, take the Camelot wheel away. Try and use your ears only and try and learn what sounds good and what doesn't based off of these general rules. Because if you're playing a live set in a nightclub, unless it's a pre-arranged set and pre you've pre-programmed all the songs, you're not gonna wanna really be pulling out a Camelot wheel and referring to it while you're DJing, right? Probably won't look very cool. So the idea here is to understand the basic rules, the fundamentals, and if you can memorize all 24 positions on the Camelot wheel, then great. If you have a photographic memory, that may work for you as well. But um, you know, practice this, try and develop the ear for it, and uh, I hope that this has been helpful for everyone in terms of mixing in key. And if you have any questions, just post in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them, guys, all right? Thanks for uh, watching, and as always, please subscribe and browse the channel for other DJ tutorial videos. Let's go to the turntables.